Hello, YouTube. So, yesterday was the Reddit Q&A with the Final Fantasy XI devs. Um, I didn't even read the questions that were being submitted, so I'm kind of going to... I'm kind of going to go into this blind. If you haven't already watched my videos on the Famitsu interview, a lot of extra information there. There's some really interesting tidbits of stuff, so definitely check out those videos as well. But today we're going to go over the Reddit Q&A, and let's just dive in. 20th anniversary official FFXI developer AMA with producer Akihiko Matsui and director Yoji Fujito says, hello, Adventures of Vanadil, happy anniversary. Producer Matsui and Director Fujito from the FF11 development team reporting in. We received communication via Link Pearl that the subreddit was interested in another AMA to celebrate the 20th anniversary. Uh, I guess they are calling it an AMA. So we've answered the call once more. As before, we're very excited to be a part of this and would like to answer many questions as possible, but we'd like you to read over the guidelines first before submitting your questions. Okay. Um, yeah. Start time and end time will be kicking. Okay. This is all basic AMA stuff. Um, after the Q&A is concluded, we will create a summary of all the answers we provided to the submitted questions. We'll make an announcement on the official site once the summary has been completed, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, okay, so it's typical AMA style. Uh, let's see. Would you be willing to consider bundling XI and XIV subs again, like they were during XIV 1.0? Even if it was a slightly more expensive subscription, I think that would allow more XIV players to try the game with minimal inconvenience to them. SE, we would like to consider this for the future. Oh! This is the first there's ever been a response to this question, I believe. I don't think there's ever been another response to that question. I I wrote this off a long time ago as, like, unlikely. Um, if Matsui P had unlimited money and resources, what would be the one thing he would like to do the most in FFXI? He says, the answer is, I'd like to renovate our development environment, which currently relies on specialized tools. Other than, other than that, I'd like to revamp the UI, reorganize the tutorial, release an expansion, and hold a live in-person event in the U.S. Oh. Um, this is sad because I had, I had a ticket to the developer meeting meetup at PAX 2020. And... That was in March. So, May? March. I think it was March of 2020, and it was canceled. Would you be... Would it be possible to add an item that allows race and gender change, similar to the Fantasia system? Answer. While it is possible, we learned that we would need to revamp several aspects of the back end. We would need to see if there's enough demand to justify the development costs. Uh, I mean, I've heard, I've heard people ask for this way more than anything else. So to me, this is, this is an in-demand thing that they are, if they're not, I mean, it sounds like they have already looked into it. So maybe this is in the works. <laughs> Even if there are currently no plans, would you please consider requesting a bigger budget and dedicated, de dedicated engineers to replace the... De the, the PS2 development kits by creating new systems and a modern... I really hope they just sell, tell you right here, we're not even using the PS2 dev kits anymore because I can't wait to actually read this because they told us they weren't. But I'm going to see what the answer to this is. Would you please re consider requesting a bigger budget and dedicated engineers to replace the PS2 dev kits by creating new systems and a modern development environment for FFXI and then migrate all existing data and assets in order to resume major version updates? Even if it takes several years and incredible effort, many players feel it'll be worth the game's future. Addendum. Uh, I don't... I'm not going to read this until we get down here. We would if we could, but considering how the game would need to be decoupled from Play Online, as well as the data format and development tools overall, this would be no easy fix. See, they told us they weren't... They told us that was old information in a previous Reddit interview. Why don't... Why don't they just address that? I just... These long questions. I, I appreciate you for asking questions it's just long questions are very difficult because you're not going to get a long answer 
since the lack of PS2 development kits is the main reason why FFXI is only currently receiving somewhat limited updates, it would be great to remove this limitation. A lot of players feel that it is becoming increasingly important to take measures to ensure the longevity of the game. We understand it would be extremely difficult and costly to do so. Okay, question. There are many locations mentioned throughout the game which we never had the opportunity to visit. Mithra Homelands, Razawa to the north. Was the full world map ever drawn up? Is there a possibility of it ever being released? Fujito says, I'd like to see it too. <laughs> <laughs> that's great I mean maybe Matsui has it hidden in a hidden in a, a, a folder somewhere the auto target feature in FF11 is very clunky in events where multiple monsters are on screen it almost always seems to target the monster that are the furthest away for some reason especially in Dynamis and Odyssey where you're limited to a specific time this is very annoying as it wastes time Sometimes poor auto-target leads to loss of TP due to the new monster being out of range. When you use your weapon skill at the same moment where auto-target activates a faraway target where the player now has to run through several target large monsters just to large model models just to attack the monster if he doesn't switch to something closer before that. Are you able to adjust auto-target between the current default setting and another preset such as nearest target? Answer. To determine a target, the auto-target system evaluates factors such as whether an enemy is close to the front of the characters within range. As you pointed out, we believe the fact that it targets enemies outside of auto-attack range is an issue? The system was sufficient back in the day when the game couldn't gracefully handle as many monsters as it currently can. However, it's true that it can become less suitable for the battle styles of current players. There's a lot of aspects to this that we're unsure if we can adjust, so we'll try requesting an investigation first. Holy cow! They're, they consider this an issue. I mean, I, I understand it as an issue, but I, to me it was just like so far from the realm of something I cared to, I cared to put effort into, you know, asking for a change on yeah this is this is exactly the kind of spaghetti spaghetti code issue that wow this would be incredible i mean it would make uh odyssey and dynamis specifically as the op mentions here um well sorry i should say the original ask the original question asker points out would you ever consider working on a single player offline version of f11 similar to G dqx offline that is coming i would love to see something like this someday they say we don't have any concrete plans right now most of all i'm worried that a vanity without other players would be bland like a beer that has lost its carbonation why was the ruined city of tavnasia uh, i guess just to comment on this quickly is i don't this doesn't this isn't something i i have any interest in but um i'm sure there are a lot of players out there who would like love to play this game but can't invest the mmorpg time and i could see it being done but maybe the devs would have a better idea of how to handle it i don't know why was the ruined city of Tavnasia never added as a playable zone in COP or with past versions of Wings of the Goddess? For the moment I saw the opening cinematic, I'd always anticipated it to be part of the game at some point, and not just a distant view at Blue Blade Fell. Um, ooh, Fujito says, this is somewhere I'd like to go one day as well. If there's a chance, I would like to make it so we can go there in the future. We don't ever ever get hopeful answers like these this is weird chat <laughs> this is like normally this is the the kind of thing where the devs would be like no comment you know what i mean like yeah we don't want to talk about that there this i just feel just a sense of like openness with the devs right now through the through 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 the 20th anniversary streams we've gotten and, and now this AMA, like, there's definitely a sense of, like, hey, we're one of you too, you know? Would you please consider allowing solo characters a party with fewer than three members to enter Delve, Incursion, Vagary, and Dynamis Divergence areas? A lot of play per players prefer to play these alone these days, but the minimum requirement of three players prevents them from accessing the aforementioned content, unlike Omen or Odyssey. Answer. The play restriction for the contents you have listed are there to help lessen the server load. Therefore, for content that is congested, we will keep the restrictions, but for others, we may consider making adjustments. 
Question. Thank you for your commitment in keeping FF11 running for all this time. Recent events on Asura server show that a character can single-handedly stop server's effort to down Moreau by causing it to repeatedly spike flail, killing everyone even beyond area arena boundaries. Would it be possible to mitigate the move effect on players that are not primary targets, like it happens for players' AoE effects? SE, we've received many reports from our Western players regarding this, so we're going to address it. If it continues to be an issue after the fix, please send in your feedback again. Uh, they're going to fix Miro's spike flail, and they've said it here. Okay. Yeah, um, just to follow that up, if you're not in Asura or don't really know what's going on with that, um, there's a there's a dragon that that you can fight daily for points, and every once in a while, or there's there's three of them that kind of like cycle between between the three um, Eshka zones, and uh, occasionally it spawns as like a super boss named Miro, and Miro's spike flail can just obliterate everybody like Fafnir and Nidhogg used to do back in the day. Um, and players were purposely griefing this, and it's a timed battle. You have like one hour to beat it. And I mean, back in the day, like early on when Moreau was spawning, you know, we were taking like sometimes 40 minutes out of the hour just to beat it, and that's without spike flails. So I imagine this just outright griefs the entire, the entire server. Just as FF11 means so much to us fans, I imagine it must be a major part of the lives of those dedicated to working on it. For whoever would like to share, what have you created or been a part of in Vanadil that is special to you? Uh, this is Mitsui. He says, there's a lot I'd like to name, but a recent example would be the feature that enables Alter Ego's logic. But a recent example would be the feature that enables Alter Ego's logic to be implemented with simplified language. Huh, I don't know what they mean here. They this must be an internal I don't under, I don't understand this. The framework for the raft that travels from Palboro Mines to Zarun Mines. I created it with the hopes of demonstrating it in action in front of other companies. But the debugging process was a lot of work, like piling on a bunch of quad of and seeing if they would make it to Zarun Mines. <laughs> That's an awesome mental image. I love the FF11 gear swapping meta. There's nothing like it in any other game. The planning and execution of each gear set is so satisfying. Was the game always planned to have gear swapping in and out? Or did that come later, along later in development or after launch? This follows up the other answer. Oh, this is an older answer. For for FFXI, there is no concept of being in or out of battle, and it has always been possible to change equipment at any time. You are currently in battle and cannot summon your trust. <laughs> uh, and then they have a follow-up answer. Also, we never imagined it would be so widely used or as a battle strategy. Nowadays, we consider it part of the FF11 experience. So they're saying there's no such thing as in battle or out of battle. You're just changing your gear at any time, I guess. it's It slightly mimics the fact that in single-player Final Fantasies, you can pause the game, maybe, and, like, change your equipment. I don't know. Do, which which games allowed you to do that, and which ones didn't? Like, I know, like, something like FF9, I think you could click, like, an equip menu. Or maybe that was one of the older FFs. I don't know. Oh, boy. This question. Would you please consider allowing players to store multiple Moglophone key items for Odyssey A, B, and C, similar to the Mystical Canteen key items for Omen? What are they going to say? What are they going to say? We'll observe the congestion surrounding Odyssey and consider this. They're doing it for congestion reasons? I don't understand. <sighs> I mean, I guess, like, if, like, say, but it, if, like, everybody decided, like, on Fridays we we're going to do Odyssey, like, the entire server decided that, I can see there'd be issues, but I don't know. Question. Can the dev team please add quality of life additions to the UI, such as official minimap support, new movable and adjustable sizes for UI elements, a UI elements to keep track of skill chains, and what can combo into them via visual indicators and assistance, along with other great UI features that FFXI 
currently offers players. I understand that this is much older than 14 and turn uses much older lines of code. Okay. The, these are, you can you can read these suggestions at your own. Tell you what. Pause the video if you want to read what this player suggests. Okay, now that you've unpaused the video, uh, let's see what the devs reply. We attempted this in the past, but the current UI system is extremely tied into fundamental systems. We learned that updating it would inflate development costs by an overwhelming amount and had to abandon the endeavor. Yeah, uh, we can look this up afterwards if you've never seen it. Um, it's kind of crazy looking. Yeah, I mean, they could just adopt Windower. <laughs> I have no idea what the implications of that would be, but if there was if there was an official Windower with an official set of add-ons, I don't know. Mages have always been on the receiving end of nerfs over the years. Death. Death Bursting, Bursting the Spell Death, was one of the primary strats used to make Ionic weapons when they were first added, which led to a burst while being implemented down the line, effectively putting Black Mages in particular on the sidelines. Later on, players started using Summoners to Conduit Burn, and while these strats are still used today, a majority of content has been penalized with a Blood-Packed Wall as a countermeasure to prevent this option. Even without the use of Astral Conduit, this option on balancing renders multiple Summoner parties effectively useless. Yeah. To the actual question, has there been any thought in putting into better balancing options that players use that the devs consider too strong instead of outright nerfing them into the ground to remove the option entirely? I mean, Savage Blade spam with nagling on everything is okay, but we can't have Summoner and Black Mages perform their actual jobs? <laughs> Answer, recent adjustments have all been buffs. With that said, the reason for nerfing many strategies in the past was because they enabled players to defeat any enemy, regardless of difficulty, by employing that strategy alone. Outside of these situations, we'd like to continue with only buffs moving forward. Uh, yes, I agree with this. I think that's what the game needs. It needs more buffs. It just like, like, for example, like, well, I mean, job changes. If you, if you consider a job change a buff, which I do in this context, the game needs more, more, uh, job changes and buffs for sure. Um, Kanagi has an agility plus 50 stat and its weapon skill blade he has an agility damage modifier but agility only benefits ranged attacks not melee attacks gandiva archery equipment has a dex plus 50 stat on its weapon skill jishnu radiance has a dex modifier but dex only benefits melee attacks not ranged attacks this choice of weapon stats and weapon skill damage modifiers seem backwards huh what was the reasoning behind these stat choices Their answer, both dex and agility, affect frontline jobs, melee, attack, and defense. Uh, I never thought about this. Hmm. I don't really know what to say here. <laughs> I really, I don't really know what to say here. So yeah, this is actually a really good point. Is well, I kind of like the idea of having different mods for different weapon skills. Uh, but like, I guess the point here is like agility. I guess this, I'm fine with this. I don't actually understand. Gandiva has Dex fifty. Yeah, but Gandiva is the only the only dex modified range skill and agility might play a place in like ranged damage calculation. I don't think so. I don't actually know the answer to that, but even if it did, Gandiva already does lots of damage with his ranged attacks. I don't, uh, I don't see a problem here. Agility is nice because it's your evasion. So like ninjas, ninjas want higher evasion. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this actually. 
Is there any plans to make rewatching cutscenes easier? The stories of FF11 are excellent, but it can be very troublesome to look for the minstrels and footprints. An easier way to rewatch cutscenes such as 14's unending journey item in houses would be wonderful. SC, while we agree with you, the cutscene data is tied to the area itself, so it would be difficult to address current. Gotcha. Um, I'm trying to find... Okay, there's no SE answer here. Okay. With the curation of new content like VR, are there any plans to implement new zones? This could include potentially old assets not released for their intended purpose. I've chatted with a bunch of older players and read through old forum posts where it seems there's, a, there's at least a small group of old and returning new players who would love to finally go to the Tavnasian capital. I'm also sure Aldo would love to finally reclaim this city as it looked like he was doing in the opening movie. They say we're preparing a battle area with all new appearance. Okay, straight up. We, I mean, we, we kind of thought this was coming, and there was a lot of things that told us that this was coming, but they're saying an all-new zone. So here it is. Official announcement. All-new zone. You heard it here, folks. On Reddit. Are there any plans to release the music of FF11 on vinyl? We have seen Square Enix release a lot of vinyl records of other Final Fantasy titles in recent years. And that makes me wonder, when will this game get the same treatment? I see. We will let the department in charge know that we have received such a request. Yeah, okay. This I mean Square Enix will make bank on this. You just make a you press a record and you sell it for a hundred dollars. And it would get sold out. Easily. Easily. During the early years of FFXI, the live Vinadil cam was used to roam across several areas of Vinadil. Seeing all those amazing locales was one of the main reasons that inspired me to get into this game and explore what I saw on the live cam. However, today it only circles around Mara and doesn't leave town. <laughs> was there any reason for this change? Since this is a live camera shot, we wanted to show players in it. That makes sense. Thank you for all the enjoyment through the years and for doing this AMA. Over the years, relic weapons have started to lack power when compared to other weapons. For instance, the Mandao is not seen as a good weapon to use. Are there any plans to bring relics up, relics up to their counterparts? Aw, we currently have no plans to do this. Aww. Well, the hopium is gone, chat. <laughs> Aww. I made a Mandao R10 for no reason. Um. Yeah, no further response on that. This person says they've really been enjoying Odyssey lately, and despite the difficulty, the 20 fights have been really fun and pushed me to do new jobs and tactics, but I did have two questions. First, were there any tactics that players took to beat the jail NMs that were a surprise, or that the dev team found particularly interesting? Second, I hear a lot of newer players asking about the difficult it is to get an Odyssey particular, since the structure of the content is so exclusive, even when trying to farm C for segs. Many don't even want to bother with it. Comments on the live stream a few weeks ago show the same frustration. For more experienced players, the loss of segments upon failure means... People aren't likely to experiment to find new strategies. Have you, or would you consider providing an alternate limited means of obtaining segments or Moglophone 2s to allow encouraged players to participate that are having a difficult time getting into segment groups or want to experiment with more new boss strategies? Regarding the first question, it didn't really deviate from our expectations. As for the second, once the congestion situation calms down, we'll consider easing it as well. All right, pretty much the same answer as earlier. Congratulations on the 20th anniversary, and thank you for the many years of service. Would you consider publishing some FF11 content in the form of companion books? Um, the amount of information available on the site is much greater than what you may be imagining. So if we took it into, into a book, it may become something big like an encyclopedia. We also have videos, so we ask you to enjoy the content from the website. Fair enough. When you come out with something new, how do you measure its success? For example, when you come out with something like Odyssey, what metrics are you using to see how well it's doing? We look at the operational data to see how many players are playing, and also look at player reaction from the forums and on social media. We're using all of your feedback as reference as well. Fair. Are there any plans to replace Play Online with something easier and quicker to log into, similar to 14? SE, we'd like to consider decoupling if possible, but it would be no easy feat since FFXI is an application built to run on the Play Online framework. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. I was hoping for more like, listen, we have it. We have it in the works. I was hoping for that. 
but uh, that is not what we got here. Um, a lot of SC games have the most spectacular cinematic cutscenes. If you could have that team make a cinematic of anything you wanted in FFXI, what would it be and why? Mitsui. The dance scene in TVR with Prince Tryon. Aw, yeah. That would be that would be perfect. I felt when I was doing that, um, when I was doing that part of Racious Resurgence, I I hated the fact that the next cutscene was like, oh well the dance is over. You know, it was like it was like the dance is gonna happen and like and like then the dance was over. And I pictured the 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 ball scene in FF8, um, you know, uh with uh with Rinwa and um and Squall. It was just it's just such a short uh cinematic that that's in eight, but I can't I could I've never been able to get that scene out of my head. And like something like that would be so it, it would make it feel more full because right now it's just like it's gonna happen it happened and it, there was like no nothing in between um the last scene in tvr even visualizing it it looks like it's going to be something wild oh cool rinwa that's that's how they pronounce it in japanese um yeah, this is awesome. The last scene in TVR, it looks like it's going to be something wild. I'm excited. So I've I've said on that on that one mission with the uh with with the one demon dude in TVR right now is the best the best cutscene in FFXI. At least visually, if not also story-wise. I mean, there's a lot of great story in the previous expansions, but probably not the, the best scene sto story-wise, but really high up there because it gives you a lot of like intrigue about what's coming in tvr but just visually it's really good i know that there's a hard limit on how many people can be in unity chat at once but could it be possible to upgrade some more trust like vulnerable was if the non-unity healers or unit damage dealers got similar reworks it provides some incentive for people to branch out more into the lesser used unity healers and similarly allow more people to actually enter the unity chat channel Answer. Valenor was adjusted in light of the Paladin adjustments and also to differentiate him from the logic for Tryon. In a similar way, we may update other alter egos alongside job adjustments if we find that many exhibit odd behavior. Okay. Hi, my brother and I also have shared an account since NA launch. We have other accounts too now, but we've always wanted to play together on our original characters. Could you ever consider a character transfer system or simultaneous login, perhaps with a fee? We aren't concerning this at the moment. Enabling character transfers between accounts would foster account selling RMT. It 100% would. It sucks, but it would. You can't you can't just sell an individual character. RMTs would abuse it to, to no end. Thank you for doing this AMA. Great to see things are still going strong after returning from a 10 year break. As a returning player that had not played since Wings, here's my question. Would you please consider adding Estatritis to the list of items which can be purchased with Hallmarks? from Ambu or increasing the amount of HMPs Rift Drop and Rift Sender that is purchased bull each month? Answer. The items you listed are supposed to be obtained from another content, so we currently have no plans to add or increase the cap. Well, there's that. Would it be possible to see additional effects of weapon skills, such blue magic, such pet abilities? Landing, thank you for asking this. Ten Kiki, doing, doing the community's work here. See the additional effects of weapon skills, blue magic, and pet abilities landing on the initial time of use alongside damage dealt. Also, would it be possible to see an enemy's buff debuffs when targeting them, similar to seeing a party member's buffs while targeting them? We should have structured it that way from the beginning. However, we would need to change general aspects, such as network packets, so this would be difficult. See, here's a problem that I have with, the, with asking questions in this environment. These two questions, it's too easy to dodge the first question if you ask the second question. Like... Like, I don't know what they're replying to. Are they replying to the first question of would it be possible for us to see the effects of blue magic landing on the target? And they're saying we should have structured it that way from the beginning, semicolon. However, we would need to change general aspects such as network packets, so this would be difficult. Or are they talking about debuffs, buffs and debuffs while targeting them? I just... Ah. Oh. To me, it sounds like they're saying like, if we structured it from the beginning where like maybe you could see like icons above the mob's head of what they're debuffed with, I don't know. Oh, while targeting them. 
Yeah, yeah, similar to the way 14 has it. In 14, you can see uh, you can see the enemy's buffs and debuffs when you target them. That'd be perfect. But they're talking about network packet. I don't know, man. I would love to have something like 14 has. I mean, because right now it's, it's just some abilities are just a black box. You're like, if a blue spell lands, you're like, well, I guess it landed. You know, Tenebral Crush, etc. Question, what was your favorite story in expansion slash why? Uh, they're curious because chain COP was always their favorite to your nostalgia, but re-completing the storylines from a new character later in my 20s as opposed to teens made me appreciate what, uh, Wings of the Goddess much, much more. Answer, we've, impl we've implemented we implemented everything that was initially planned for in Rise of the Zalar, and I was relieved of the sense of accomplishment. As a developer, I enjoyed working on treasures, as I had the opportunity to design some unique jobs. Matsui. Uh, Fujito says, Wings of the Goddess. Being able to walk around all those areas in the past stirred up a lot of nostalgia, and I really like the story, too. Void Enjoyer. Can you please remove the one-second lockout on the equip set command? Answer. Equipment processes are running during that one second, so this would not be possible. Okay. Uh, while Paladin and Rune Fencer enjoy widespread use, other tanks like Ninja and Puppet Master are used for more specific things. Likewise, Warrior and Dark Knight can somewhat tank or off-tank, but lack of proper tools to maintain enemy or operate without a full team supporting them. Are there any changes or items that are being considered to allow these less capable tanks to be a little bit more useful? Before I look at the answer to this, um, I, I want to just kind of like rephrase this question the way I think about it is um is in terms of job changes are you planning to make job changes that make more tanks viable is the way i i think about this and their answer we currently have no plans to improve their tanking capabilities as these jobs are well suited for dps Fair. Yeah. it'll be on us chat to sub rune fencer and figure out how to tank as uh as those off tank jobs that everybody's so interested in with uh, ml50 Will there be an investigation on 60 FPS mode? I know it's heavy work and needs a lot of QA. Needs a lot of quality assurance, but it will significantly improve game experience. They say, we tried this before, but abandoned it due to errors occurring with FFX size graphics drawing system. Yikes. Uh, let's see. Has any chance we can see the game released on modern consoles? We'd like to great to see us on PS5 free to play up to a certain level, like XIV to pull in loads of players. Consoles are lacking MMOs, and it's a real shame. Uh, thank you for your feedback. <laughs> As for the free play duration, we'll look into this. <laughs> this is the most political answer I've seen yet. They ask a question about PS5, and they say, thank you for your feedback. <laughs> the Siege is pretty much broken now. Each time it... <laughs> he, yeah, no in quotation marks, exactly. The siege is pretty much broken now. Each time it happens, it only lasts one or two minutes. Have you planned to fix it? Because it's one of the most awesome content in the game. SC. Although we considered this in the past, we simply can't make the enemy stronger due to how besieges elements like key NPCs and Alzabi getting kidnapped and the keeping track of consecutive victories. So we're leaving it as it is now. Yeah, fair enough. Um, who are your favorite NPCs and why? Everyone loves Shintoto, but Naja easily tops my list. She rules the Sentinels with an iron fist. Paul? But I love her domineering attitude and her no-nonsense management style. Uh, answer. Halver and Carilla. Since my personal character started in Sandoria, they took care of me during cutscenes and missions. Fujita says they're all quirky and lovable, but I don't have any particular favorites. Any chance of Apex Jug Pets? SE. We aren't considering adding anything particular at the moment, but if we were to add them, we could make them work as alternate appearances for existing pets. As for their attributes, adding a clearly superior version of an existing pet family would render the existing ones useless. So it's possible that jug pets of Apex monsters would not be as powerful as you might imagine. Hmm, interesting. Apologies if this has been asked, but is it possible to fix trust mechanics to have a command to attack and or buff instead of going into combat every time? Answer, alter egos move automatically and aren't meant to be commanded. Therefore, we won't have a feature like this one you are requesting. Makes sense to me. Hello and thank you again for this AMA. Would it be possible to add a player into Blacklist as easily as it is to add someone in a party? Something like slash search all player name option add to Blacklist would make it easier to Blacklist players that have names like face keyboard face roll. 
Answer, it would be appreciated if you could please report them to STF. Also, if you can detail what those bot characters are doing, actually causing you trouble, that would help us during our investigations. Um, question, would you please consider making individual job adjustments again? Oh, please answer this question. Such as Black Mage, Ninja, Pup, Summoner, Beast, and Thief could use some adjustments to make them more useful during party play. Please answer, please answer. They didn't answer, no. Please try to keep your questions concise so we can translate them. See what I mean, chat? You just, you can't ask long questions in something like this. You need to be concise and short to the point. Would you please consider making individual job adjustments again? <laughs> I felt like we got the answer during the uh, uh, Famitsu interview, but uh, the answer here would have been perfect. All right, I think we're out. Oh no, okay. Any chance jug pets could become key items? Answer, when balancing them with the pets of other jobs, jug pets would require a summoning cost. As such, I believe the current style is for the best. <laughs> that makes sense. The cost is the jug. Um, I have two questions if you can get to them. One, are there currently any plans to allow Omni Crafters? Will we be able to level all crafting professions at once? Two, there are low level quests that can have level caps that are very difficult to complete because no one is doing them. Are there plans to remove or possibly raise level caps in quests like the big one or summoner trial size quest? Question, answer for one. As you may be aware, there are recipes that require multiple skills and the rate in which HQ is made is based on the current skill cap, which also balances the economy. So we have no plan just, plans to change this. Yeah, yeah. They've balanced a lot of HQ recipes around having subcrafts. So yeah, that's that. I should have been in the FF11 category a long time ago, I think, chat. We're not playing freaking triangle strategy <laughs> right now anymore this is longer than i thought but there's some there's some neat little tidbits in here sort of like the famitsu interview had some um they asked it here but they even this question is too involved just say are you still doing job adjustments Mm. I should have been here, man. Should have been here. It looks like these these questions may have been asked after the AMA was over at this point. Or these just weren't upvoted, maybe. All right, that's it. All right, that's going to do it for the AMA. Mm. Actually, before we go, I am going to search this. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, look, right here. This is a post from 2012. As announced in the FF11 2012 roadmap, an extensive user interface inter overhaul is currently in development. They wanted to add multi-window mode. Users will be able to open and manipulate multiple windows. This was what was scrapped. They were talking about it in the... Uh... Oh, and this is Tanaka, actually. Interesting. Um, they were talking about this in the AMA. They're like, we, we couldn't do it. We tried. Layout customization. Users will be able, be able to drag UI elements with the mouse to new locations, which will be saved for future gaming sessions. Oh, man. Multiple log windows. Apply different filters. Font will be vectorized instead of bitmaps. The macro palette will display the time remaining until each macro may be used again. High-res status effect icons. No more songs with the same... That with the same uh, color. Macro palette icon display. Users will have the option to display icons for magic and abilities contained in macros. User customization features. The Windows scheme and GUI scripts for FF11 will be released so users can design their own interface features. They were they were working on their own version of Windower. Okay. Uh, that's going to do it for, for the video. Uh, 
YouTube, catch me live at twitch.tv slash scotty underscore deluxe. Uh, how'd you like the AMA? Post down below. Anything interesting to you? Anything you found surprising? I don't know. Hit me up. All right, peace out.